will hear Jesus going to that land, fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy. Jesus then calls followers to help him bring his light into our world. As we begin our liturgy today, let us ask God to also help us be his light of love, joy, and peace to our world. The presider at this Mass is Father Dan Nascimento. Please stand and let us begin. Our opening song is number 605. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior. Number 605. We gather in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As the song reminds us, God calls us to life. What God teaches us, what God shows us, is the path to a richer and full, abundant life. It is our sins that have uh, hurt one another, who has destroyed um, our lives. And so as we begin, we acknowledge our faults and our failures and ask the good Lord to forgive not only our personal sins, but the sins of our family, the sins of our nation, the sins of our world. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Sebuli and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified this seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispel is darkness. For there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rut of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. and 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there have are been our rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. The New Testament was originally written in Greek, and New Testament Greek had two words for time, chronos and kairos. Chronos, from where we get the word chronology, 
is the time that we measure with a clock or with a watch. Each second is exactly like the one before and the one that will follow. It can feel long, especially if we're sitting in class waiting for the bell to ring or when, at, when we're at work waiting for the work day to end. Sometimes it's boring. Other times it feels it's something to be endured. And yet other times it's just routine. Kairos, however, is special. Whereas Kronos time continues with the ticking of the clock, Kairos time can feel like it's standing still. Kairos is when God breaks into the routine and speaks loud and clear and touches us so powerfully deep in our soul that we can never be the same. In cartoon, artists will depict this like a light bulb turning on. It's an aha moment, or theologians will call it a moment of revelation. And today's gospel, when Matthew tells us that from that time on, Jesus began to preach. Matthew is using the word kairos for time. Jesus, in beginning his ministry, is inserting kairos time into our chronos time. And one of the first things Jesus does is he calls men to be his disciples. So Jesus is breaking into the ordinary lives of these fishermen and invites them to respond. Now, as a teen, when I heard today's gospel, I thought it was pretty amazing that these fishermen would simply hear an invitation of Jesus and drop everything to follow him. But chances are this was not their first encounter with him. They must have spent time together. Jesus must have gotten to know them. And likewise, they also must have sized them up. So when Jesus was ready to begin his ministry, he knew who he was going to call. And he knew, and they knew, what he was asking them to do. Throughout Jesus' ministry, they were filled with Kairos moments. Like when the moment he asked Zacchaeus, to come down from that tree and to eat in his house and with the other tax collectors. Or that time when Jesus forgave the adulterous woman or healed the woman who was hemorrhaging for many years. God continues to break into our world in simple, ordinary ways. For example, a father who was very busy working from home was interrupted by his young son. Fortunately, the father, instead of being upset, patiently turned towards the son, and the son presented the father with a white paper cup with black dirt in it. A little green plant was shooting up from it, and the son said, Daddy, this is a tomato plant. At school, we've been studying how God makes things grow and how we can help him. I've been working on this tomato plant, and I want to give it to you and Mommy. You're always giving me things, so I want to give you this tomato plant because I love you so much. As they hugged each other, the father said, Time stood still. Nothing else mattered. Kairos time. Another story happened a few days before Christmas. A woman shared that after the sudden death of her mother due to a car accident, as fellow mourners gathered to pray and to offer their condolences, although few words were expressed, the touch and genuine love that people showed strengthened her during her time of grief. She shared that the value of family and friends have taken on new meaning for her. And so this too 
was a kairos moment when God breaks into our chronos time to let us know we're not alone. Lastly, I'll share a story from a student hospital chaplain. You know, Father uh, Emmanuel, he's from Nigeria, and currently he's uh, studying as a hospital chaplain up at UCSF. But this is from another student chaplain. One day a nurse told him that a patient was giving up on treatment and just wanted to die. She didn't want any visitors, won't accept any flowers, didn't want to talk with anyone. The nurse said if anyone needs a visit from the chaplain, she needed one. So the student chaplain prepared himself for the visit, but when he got to her room, he did everything wrong. He pushed the door too hard, and it slammed. He accidentally kicked her bed. He tried to talk to her and pray with her, but everything came out wrong. Afterwards, he felt like such a failure that he was ready to quit. A week later, when he returned to the hospital, he saw from the charts that she had survived the surgery and was in good condition. He was able to go speak to her and ask if she remembered him. She said, how could I forget you? You saved my life. Feeling a little confused, he said, I felt terrible. I did everything wrong. And she replied, that's just it. I felt so sorry for you. You were so pitiful that I just wanted to hug you. I felt compassion for you. And it was the first time in months that I felt anything other than self-pity. That little spark of compassion I had for you made me want to live again. God breaking into our chronos time. What the young chaplain learned from that experience is, I don't have to be perfect. I don't even have to be good. All I have to be is faithful. Just do my best and trust God to do the rest. Similarly, the disciples Jesus chose were not the best nor the brightest. They even ran away when the going got tough. But they tried. Likewise, when the moment comes when God interrupts our chronos, don't ignore it or try to push it away. Be open and be present to it. God may be showering us with a blessing like he did with that father when the son wanted to present him with a gift. Or God may be trying to comfort us or help us with a burden we're carrying. And if God thinks our shoulders are strong enough to help others, allow him to use us as his blessing for others. Remember what the young chaplain learned. We don't have to be very good, but simply try our best and leave the rest up to God. And we too can bring Kairos time into someone's ordinary Kronos time. Amen. And so to this God who brings into, who breaks into our chronos time, to him let us renew our profession of faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father in heaven, because you have shown us the great light of our salvation, we approach you in confidence with prayers for the needs of the world that the church, guided by the Holy Spirit, continue in love to gather those in darkness to the radiance of the living Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in positions of authority promote the belief in the sacredness of human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Prayer. That, that people struggling for independence and justice may achieve their goals without bloodshed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those adversely affected by the recent rains find safety and a swift order of or return of order to their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill, and especially Cynthia Bendania, Bendania Father Michael Brilliantes, Ryan Bat and Charlie Cunningham, along with their families, find comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have recently died, especially Joseph Bravo and Fino Van Yen, find eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Genevieve Loftus, and Carlia, and Carlia Asturias, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of glory, as we patiently await the coming of your kingdom, give us the courage to rely on your help in all things. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The song for the preparation of the gifts, number 562, 10,000 reasons, number 562.
chinchilla and you're slow to anger. Name is great and your heart is high. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant it that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus, your Son. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs> Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have all this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Genevieve Loftus, Carla Asturias, and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With one heart and one faith together, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. See? 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The communion song is number 608. Your words are spirit and life. Number 608. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We have a few announcements. You may be seated if you like. Good news, there is no second collection this Sunday. Happy Lunar New Year to all of you. There is a Chinese New Year Mass at the Cathedral on Saturday, January 28th at 2.30 p.m., followed by a Chinese banquet at the Cathedral Hall at 5 p.m. We have a table reserved for St. Anne. Let Father Dan know if you'd like to join his table. Save the date. For all who've joined Father Dan and gave half a percent or more to the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal, our champagne brunch will be on Sunday, February 5, following the 10 a.m. Mass. Please let us know if you'll be planning to attend. And thank you, everyone, for helping us meet the AAA assessment. In order to support Chinese ministry, so St. Anne's has a table of 10. If you'd like to join me and eat with me at that uh, Chinese New Year banquet next Saturday, uh, let me know and we'll invite you to the table. Okay. Thank you to our musicians. What a, I feel like we're at the cathedral or something. It sounds so formal, it sounds so beautiful. Thank you so much for our musicians. Can you introduce her to us? What's her name? Thank you, Marsha. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> And of course, our star altar servers, as well as our lector and Eucharistic, lectors and Eucharistic minister and usher. So thank you all for your ministry. Please stand and may the Lord be with you. I don't feel it. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is in it. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Our closing song is number 676, Healing River of the Spirit, number 676. Sweep. 